People start mysteriously dying after an up-and-coming artist becomes obsessed with an old urban legend that started in the Cabrini Green projects of Chicago. I'm in the group of people who were terrified by the original Candyman in the early 1990s. I definitely was too young to watch it, but I watched it anyway at my cousin's house and just never told my parents. Of course, on the elementary school playground, all the kids were talking about how brave they were for watching Candyman and then going in the bathroom and saying Candyman and actually seeing him in the mirror. Now, I knew they didn't really see Candyman in the mirror, and I even have memories of me and my two cousins going into the bathroom and chickening out before we could say it. Even if we hadn't chickened out, I'm pretty sure that we wouldn't have seen Candyman in the mirror. But to this day, because of how this movie scarred me, I still won't say Candyman in the mirror. Or Bloody Mary. You know, just to be sure. Now, while I love the original Candyman, I never saw any of the sequels. And I probably wouldn't have seen this sequel either had Jordan Peele not co-written the script and produced it. Horror movies are notorious for having unneeded sequels that just feel like cash grabs and do nothing except take away some of the magic from the original. So I was happy to learn that this sequel is a direct sequel to the original, ignoring those mid-90s sequels that I hear aren't very good anyway. And since I haven't seen the original Candyman in nearly a decade, I didn't remember a whole bunch of the story beats. But lucky for me, there's a character in this sequel to Candyman who tells an urban legend at a dinner party, and that urban legend is the story of the first movie. So you don't have to have seen the original Candyman to get something out of this one. The way that the original Candyman and the sequel tie together works really well, even if it is pretty easy to figure out what's going on long before it's revealed. Unlike the original Candyman, this sequel does not have a subtle message. The message is pretty heavy-handed and in-your-face. They're not going to let you forget it. They bring it up in pretty much every scene. And I don't usually like movies that do that, but for some reason it didn't really bother me here. The way that these social issues, such as gentrification, wrongful accusation, and generational trauma is woven into the lore of the Candyman character is really well done. But I do think that the message would have been a little more effective if they'd focused on just one social issue instead of a whole bunch of social issues. Now, none of the characters in this new Candyman sequel hold a candle to the booming presence of the original Candyman portrayed by Tony Todd, but all of the performances are serviceable. Even if there's not a whole lot of character development and some of the characters are just on screen long enough to get killed. This sequel is not nearly as terrifying as the original. Now, part of that may be that I'm no longer 10 years old, but even if it's not as scary, there are a bunch of really cool and creative slasher movie kills, and I find the general tone and the mood of the movie to be great. Now, while the scares aren't there in this sequel, the ominous mood and the creative slasher movie kills are. The great theme song from the original movie is back as well, and I find the cinematography and the camera angles to actually be more inventive than the original. In every scene, there's a chance for something to be lurking quietly in the background or for something to come right out of the mirror and spill some blood. Not everything in this sequel worked, and I didn't really love how it ended, but I really enjoyed the way that it brought the original Candyman, urban legend, into the modern day and tied in some social messages with it. It's not a masterpiece, but it is well made, and I do keep thinking about the movie's message. Giving candy to children in the creepiest way possible. Inventive camera angles. Mirrored elevators. Shadow puppetry. Telling scary stories in the dark. Thinking you can fly.